Hello everyone, and welcome to another banner review. This time it's going to be about Legendary Roy. Well, Legendary Roy is a bit unfortunate, but before we start, I might as well just point this out. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow my summons for the Roy banner. I'm going to be trying to get one Roy for Gem Key, just so he has enough infantry flowers, and two red to finish the plus 10 red. He's plus 8 right now. If you are curious about that, you can just join Discord below. It, I'm, bro I'm just going to tag my Discord whenever I'm going to go live. It's probably going to be a bit later than I usually start streaming. More, mostly around 4 p.m. Uh, est, obviously. But yeah, let's move on to the actual video. So, Roy comes in. With, honestly, a rather lackluster kit. I don't understand why he has Dragon Fang and Renewal. I guess maybe Dragon Fang to, you know, refer to the fact that Ninian is his mom? That's, like, as much as a connection as I can make out of this. But, already there you can tell the problem, he has a DC weapon. Definitely not as bad as Ryoma, because Ryoma is a flyer, and flyers with a DC weapons are just... That's dead on, on arrival. Roy can definitely make more use of it because of bonus doubler. The problem is... The problem is Marf exists. But... Uh, let's not go to this yet. I'm going to keep that for a bit later. So, bonus, bonus doubler, again, legendary Marf exists, his weapon is literally bonus doubler, dragon effectiveness, and three extra speed. So, if you're familiar with Marf, you're familiar with Roy, it just doubles whatever buff you have right now. Renewal, why the fuck is that there? Honestly, if they were smart, they would have given him no follow-up. Not Renewal. No follow-up would have actually made his speed a lot more interesting and actually a lot more workable. So, that's kind of a shame. Human Virtue is actually pretty nice. Uh, it gives 6 attack, 6 speed, in the same manner as a joint skill. Uh, so long as, obviously, the joint skill is not with, <laughs> does not have any beast or dragon allies. The problem with this is if you have any beast or dragon unit on the team, this might actually backfire because it does not provide anything if, well, you have any beast or dragon around you. Mind you, this is not. This is mostly a minor complaint, mostly a nitpick really at this point. But yeah, this is the unique skill he's got. Yikes. Um. So, let's talk about the big problem Roy faces. He is an Ira. The fourth of his kind of this color. I'm only showcasing those four right now because those four are red. The other two are blue and colorless, being Nyla and Veloria. So I'm not going to talk about these. But, yeah. Flowers. Now, I know what a lot of people would say, Roy has 169 BST, that is true. The problem with that statement, however, is that while he does have 169 BST, all of his competitors have 162 to 163 and can just get plus 10 flowers, which means 172 to 173 while he has 174. So the gap is not all of that. Mind you, while this is a fact, there's also the problem that plus 10 with flowers is 860 flowers, whereas plus 5 is only 400. So it's a lot cheaper for Roy, and that's actually a good point to point out. Another thing is that his blessing makes him score like basically legendary Hector on fire season. The problem is legendary Hector does that already. That said, it does open up a few situations, and the fact is, he has two movement, he's a good buffer, so he's so by extension, he becomes a fantastic cheerleader for anything that is not a dragon or beast, which is great, 
but that's kind of where it ends. So let's talk about what differentiates Ira, Owain, and Marv from Roy. Now, uh, Ira should not come to any surprise. She has Regnal Astra, or Pref is shit, but you tend to replace it for Slaying Edge because then you can proc Regnal Astra twice. Combo it with Wrath really easily, bait and punish in one hit, possibly even one-shotting quite a few foes because Wrath, the damage calculation where you get the plus 10 damage, it applies the second um, it procs. So basically, if you start a fight with 50 HP, you get hit to 35, and then you proc a special, Wrath will give you the 10 damage. So it's this makes her have a very strong enemy phase as well as a very powerful player phase. Ragnar Astra is a two cooldown, and the fact that it's two cooldown is the big game changer here. It is absolutely wonderful. Owain follows suit. Uh, she he doesn't have a unique special, but Blue Flame comboed with his weapon, it basically works the same way. He attack gets hit, proc again. Uh, well, proc gets attack, proc again because whenever he gets hit. Be it player or enemy phase, he gets two charges, so blue flame works the same. It's just more gimmicky and more difficult to consistently do because blue flame requires someone next to you to have a pretty good effect. And yeah, so thank god for his weapon because his weapon is what actually makes him pretty unique and good. And then here comes Marf, which is his biggest competitor because both of them are fire blessed unit. So, yikes. And um, this is where it gets really nasty for Roy. Marf has two more HP, one more attack, one less speed. However, Dragonbind does not prov provide any stats. Marf's Exalted Falchion gives three speed. So, he actually doesn't have one less speed, but two more speed than, Mar than Roy. Also, one more death. So... To recapitulate, two more HP, one more attack, two more speed, and one more death. What does Roy have? Four reds. Ouch. Not to mention, Marth actually buffs more than just HP. Now, before we start talking about this, I do want to say, uh, the buff that Roy has right now is incomplete. So... We'll have to wait until April to actually really have a perfect opinion of the Blessing itself. But Marv gives 3 HP and 4 res. Res is, is kind of a, a Achilles eel for a lot of characters, so he actually patches that a bit, which is definitely welcomed. So, yeah. Uh, Marv kind of just breaks Roy stat-wise, doesn't he? The problem is, it gets even worse from there, because Marv has double bonus as his weapon. You don't want to get rid of that to begin with, so Roy's A skill is basically locked. Replacing it would be foolish, basically. However, Marv has it in his weapon, and DC is nowhere near as required as bonus doubler. Bonus doubler will always be important for Roy, but DC for Marth will only be relevant for PvE content. That's the thing. So, yeah, not to mention Marth can just run double bonus doubler and then combo this into Owa Kaden for like 24 all around while Roy can only get 18 all around. You get the idea. Um, it's not that Roy sucks, it's just that his competition is fierce. Absolutely fierce. Not to mention, Marf also has Fire Emblem, so he can work as a team buffer. This synergizes really well with Kaden. Um, really well with characters like Erica, if you're fine with running another red. Really fine for anyone that uses bonus doubler as well, which is an inheritable skill. Infantry locked, mind you. But all the well, all the same, it's still an inheritable skill. And 
On top of that, he has Binding Shield, so you can stop. You can just decide to go Armor Smasher, Binding Shield, kill basically every dragon and armor unit out there, outside of a very, very select few. And Roy, on the other hand, doesn't really have anything, does he? It sucks, but like the only thing that really defines him is his buff. Something that Titania and Seth do just as well, if not better, because it has extra range. But obviously you have a team comp restriction, but so does Roy's weapon, so well, not weapon, C skill. So it's very shaky. The problem Roy really comes into is just the fact that he doesn't have anything unique to him, while everyone else in the competition has something that's so good and unique about them that makes them stand out, while Roy just doesn't stand out. It's a shame, because I actually do like Roy to some extent. I wouldn't go as far as to say that he's my favorite lord. I think Leaf would de definitely take that home and then sell it. But... Definitely, like, a, a big shame that this is what we get for Roy. And it's even more insulting when you realize that the last month was Legendary Azura. Yeah. Legendary Azura, ah, it's fine. Great Waves is balanced, guys. Oh, let's also slap Prayer Wheel because Great fucking Great Waves is not good enough. What the fuck, dude? This kind of just shits all over what Roy has already, because just Prayer Wheel is a flat six all around, whereas Roy only gives six to all to two stats to adjacent unit. Like, what the fuck? I don't mean to be insulting here, but why? And then on top of this, you uh, you give extra movement. Oh yeah, who, does, who was the idiot who decided that, oh yes, you know what would be fair and balanced? I know, Ophelia with 7 attack range. What the fuck? What, what is wrong with you? The most broken unit of 2018. I don't want to hear anyone say that Cerner is stronger. He's not. As a matter of fact, I feel like he can kill Surter in one round unless he has DC, for fuck's sake. Like, through Wary Fighter, because her AoE do so much damage, it breaks Wary Fighter. How busted is this? Who thought this was fine? Huh? But yeah, like, 7 movement. Have fun dealing with this in AR, I'm sure that... Anyone that's high enough in AR is having so much joy that she exists. I know I don't. I know I fucking don't. But, anyway. So, you have Azura on one side that got, that got like everything in the world to really shine. And then you have Roy that basically, oh yeah, here's your adjacent 6 attack and speed buff that doesn't even work on every unit. Why? Even if it had no limitation, it would still not be good enough. But at least you could combo Tiki with hit, uh, but at the same time it would not even be that broken because at the end of the day, one's fire, one's earth, you can't really make them work together all that well. But here we are! Yay! Who? Who thought this was fine? Oh. Anyway. So, yeah. Moving on to comparison. Obviously, this comes to no shock. Uh, Ira just does everything Owen do, but more consistently. So, of course, I'm going to take her over Owen. And I already made the comparison for them. To put it simply, Ira is better offensively than Ra than Roy, and Marv is more versatile than Roy is, in a nutshell. Not to mention, if at the end of the day they're both fire hero, well... Mm -hmm. 
If you had, like, something like Draconic Aura as a two-cooldown special, for example, this would have opened a lot of ways for him to work. Probably even ditch his weapon for saying Edge and Wrath. Something like that. That could have worked. Combos really well with Bonus Doubler, could have also a Brazen, uh, could have hit so much attack at the end of the day that you could have, like, Basically, it would have become an Ira with a two cooldown version of this. Yes, this pref is not fantastic, but at least you can switch that to Slaying Edge, and, well, you'd be able to work about just as well. The fact that you don't have any other choice is kind of a shame. So, down the line, unless you really like Roy, which I can imagine a lot of people do, I would strongly suggest going for Marth instead if you're going for a Fire Legendary that's red. And of course, well, Ira is more accessible, though she has not gotten a banner for 8 months now. I'm kind of happy I decided to say, yeah, you know what, fuck this. Uh, I'm going to go on this banner for the last merge I need for Ira, fuck this. Because if I didn't... My Ira might still be plus 9, <laughs> so uh, that would have sucked, oh, that, that would have sucked, but yeah, that's kind of a shame. I was really hoping Roy would be better than this, but here we are. I was actually expecting her, him to be an Ira, but at the same time I was hoping he wasn't. If I'm being honest, base Roy can actually be summed up as better than this Roy. Just because his pref is so much more versatile, you can do so much more with it. I don't know, dude. Seriously, if you want my opinion of what I would have done to make his pref more interesting, I would have just slapped no follow-up on top of DC. Not even that broken. Really not even that broken, but it gives him a bit more room to work with. And makes his speed so much more interesting because the thing is he has 38 base speed bonus doubler pushes that to 50 that's overkill so unless you have something like no follow-up you don't really gain much from it Marf has the same problem by the way but you know so yeah talking about builds as you can see there's not much variety here uh, everything else would require you to switch to a slaying edge, and that definitely can't work, uh, can work, sorry, but it's definitely shaky. Mystic Boost is great to actually really make use of his bulk. Keep in mind this is a neutral Roy, I did not really give him IVs because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you use. If you have attack plus, that's great, you hit harder. If you have more speed, that's probably overkill, but if you're not at plus 10, speed plus is fine. Um, though, frankly, actually, no, no, it's still too much, it's still too much. I would say Speed Plus and HP Plus are the two boons to avoid, but Attack, Death, and Res Boon are all great. Absolutely all great. Like, with a Res Boon here, you would have 48 Death and 45 Res. With DC, it's definitely workable. It's just that the problem is, Legendary Morph can do basically the same, to some extent, except even better because he can just run double bonus, bonus doubler. But at least for PVE content, he can be pretty comparable to Marth if Marth runs DC because you kind of want DC for uh, anything that you know is PVE related. Because in those maps, you'll ha you'll end up fighting ranged units so much more. He's also very easy to buff. All you need is Death and Rest Tactic. That's all you need. That's it. And that's great. That's actually very helpful for him. That's kind of all I can really dig up for strengths. As you can see, when it comes down to builds, you don't really have a whole lot you can do. The assist is flexible. So you're stuck with three skill to change. More or less. The B skill the special, and sometimes the weapon. The seal is 
well, I mean, it's kind of flexible as well. You can, you can run a lot of things. Bond, for example, are a good example of things you can do. Uh, especially if attack res bond ever becomes a thing. That's it. And that's really all I can say. Now, about the banner itself. Now, I do want to say before we start. This is experimental. Please tell me how it looks for you, if it looks bad or good. Because all of this, this interface, I had to make it manually because Gamepedia decided to stop doing those um, boards with all the units on them. And because they stopped, I had to end up adapting and making my own thing. I'll probably make the cells a bit wi wider, but as is, this is about as good as I can make it for now. This shit took me two or two to three hours to, to make through a spreadsheet, so yeah. As obvious as this is before someone asks, red means super bane, green means super boon. Not very complicated, I know, but just thought I'd point it out. Point it out. So, alright. The best color is by far red. Red has red, which is an insane unit. If you have seen any streams where I use them, you'd know that he's actually broken. He's actually one of the most underrated legendary unit. If I'm being honest, he's easily top three when it comes down to legendary units in terms of use and power. That weapon, man, that, that weapon is insane. Debuff someone, you break them, essentially. That's as simple as this is. Roy is alright. Probably the weakest of the Reds, just because... Just because he has so much competition. Like, Red has no competition whatsoever. The, the closest to competition he has... Is Sigbert. Who does not compare at all on the attack department. And does not consistently break doubles like Bold Fighter, Wary, uh, Wary Fighter also to some extent, like Red does. And also has like very shite res, unlike Red. Red has like a solid 10 more points in res than he does. So, yeah. And Dancer Mikaya, which uh, I stand by what I said on my analysis of her banner when she came. She is one of the best dancer out there with the most utility out of any dancer. She can ploy consistently. She kills most green armored unit alone with little to no effort. She also offers dance support. So yeah, like that's a lot. Killing most armored unit including Zelgus and Surtur by herself is already a feat in its own, but offering ploy support for a bonus unit, for example, and on top of it, just being able to dance? That's insane. That's insane. She definitely won't be as stinky as, say, Olivia, but when it comes down to dealing with pesky units, she's amazing. Definitely one of the most important units for your AA runs. At the bare minimum. So, what else? Uh, I'd say the second best color is green, and then blue, and then colorless. So let's go with blue. What does blue have? Well... Um, Niles has attack speed link, which is fantastic for Caden, as speed buffs are actually very difficult to get, but attack on top of it is definitely more interesting. That said, while that's true, it's also a bit shaky in the sense that Kaden already comes with speed res and attack tactic and death tactics are not that difficult to get. So yeah, outside of that there's really not much you can go with when it comes on to links. Not that they're bad per se, it's just that it it's not there's not a lot of characters that can really fully make use of them. The most important one would be Death Res Link, um, but that one is locked to a seasonal still, so I guess we're in the waiting room. Here comes Corrin. Uh, Attack Death Bond is definitely one of his biggest, biggest skill. 
Also has a dragon buff, I believe. Not that it matters too much. The most important part is that he has no follow-up. He's also a fairly fantastic unit in his own right. 35-35 um, with actually a pretty good death stat is not bad at all. You can make the case he's basically an Ira, but he's definitely more focused around attack. And also has a really, really good weapon. Really, really good weapon. That synergizes really well with his stat line. So, yeah. Ephraim, also pretty good unit. Um, if I were to pick between Rid and Ephraim, however, I'd say Ephraim, uh, not Ephraim, Rid, is more consistently helpful. I'm not trying to shit on Ephraim, though I don't really like him as a lord, but that's beyond the point. The point is, as a Gale Force user, Ephraim is blue. Most of the meta is green. Green hurts blue bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. The fact that red is red is okay good in that case. To put it in Sage's term. So, yeah. He's a good unit, just kind of held back by his color as a result. Niles is not bad, just doesn't really have anything to really set him apart from the rest. And he needs Special Fighter to be even remotely dangerous. So, what else? Here comes Green, the worst unit is probably Guntra. Uh, that said, Guntra is a fantastic Blade Tome unit and should not be underestimated. Then comes Surter, Steady Stands for is a fantastic skill, and he's also a really good cheerleader in general, just because he actually scores really well, and well, debuffing HP is a fantastic, fantastic ability. It makes killing with your bonus unit all the much easier. What else? Well, Corin. Corin has attack speed bond sadly, but more importantly she also has Rally Attack Speed Plus, which is really good in the ends of Legendary Tiki, because Legendary Tiki provides 5 death 5 res, true with everyone, and Rally Attack Speed Plus offers an extra 6 attack and 6 speed. This can allow Tiki to serve as one of the best cheerleader out there, because then you have a Nick, uh, the other 2 unit of your party being there purely Purely to give drives on top of the buffs that Tiki already provides, which is pretty good, to put it simply. As a unit, however, she's definitely a bit of on the yike side, too focused on speed. She has a super boon in speed, which, frankly, don't take. It's it's a noob trap. It's literally a noob trap. Because the problem that Corin ends up with is that she has too much speed. You see that's point the, the those stats and speed? Well, add an extra 5 attack and speed to it. That's what her weapon does. If there's more people around her than on the enemy side, she gets 5 attack and 5 speed. This is important. Because the extra 5 speed just pushes it to why the fuck are you going for speed plus? Because then you end up at 46 speed, and if you have any kind of thing to buff your speed on top of that, you break the 50. Typically, the amount of speed you want is 45. Anything over this tends to be overkill. 45 allows you to battle with most of the speedsters of this game without getting doubled. And if you have a buff on top of this, well, you sh you shouldn't, you, you really, really shouldn't. And keep in mind, this is with standards set at plus 10 foes. If your unit is at plus 0, breaking the 50 speed, you don't need this. You don't need to be at breakneck amount of speed. Because at the end of the day, you gain nothing from this, whereas 3 attack would consistently be helpful in your case. And it's even worse when she has attack speed bond, fucking hell. 
Ideally, what she would want is attack res bond to combo it with attack def bond seal if you want to actually build her. So, yeah. Other than that, here comes Colorless with one of the character on there that should not even be in the 5 star pool. Mikoto! Yay! Honestly, I still stand by my stance at f that I made at first, which is the fact that she should have been demoted. Colorless is a dead pool. Count the amount of unit that literally gives nothing to be summoned. And I mean nothing really loosely. Like, I consider Own Speed 3 Matthew to be a worthy skill. You have Drive Death on Nana, you have Attack Tactic on Legolt, you have Own Speed on Matthew, as I said. What else? You see the problem? Oh, Life and Death on Soph as well. But yeah, you see the problem? Less than one sixth of the colorless pool actually has father. One sixth. What the fuck is wrong with IS? Which is another reason why I feel like Valoria should get demoted. And why also Mikoto should 100% have them moded. But hey, it's IS and they decide whatever the fuck they want, so... I guess fuck me, right? I would have actually built Mikoto, but she's definitely not worth my money, because... Frankly, she's just a worse Loki. Why would I bother plus tending a Mikoto if I can plus ten Loki? It's just dumb. Now, when it comes down to skill, she has Infantry Rush, which is alright. A bit shaky, but definitely workable in a few scenarios. Still, it's definitely too shaky for my liking. That said, uh, she also has a Flash, which is a pretty solid staff, but again, shaky. Uh, it's kind of the problem. Uh, the problem being, well, you kind of need Dazzling on top of Raffle to really make full use of Flash. Because, well, it, it doesn't have Dazzling in itself. It gives Dazzling after the fight. So you need Dazzling, and then you need Raffle to actually do enough damage for it to matter. So, yeah. It's not bad, just not great. Then you have Grimma, which... Why the fuck would you bother in this day and age with Grimma when Veloria's a thing? I know Veloria does not have any freedom when it comes down to weapon, and Grimma actually has more freedom. As a matter of fact, Grimma is better when it comes down to arena purpose, because you can run Wind Sweep Dark Breath. Something Veloria can't ever do. Veloria, all she gets is two charge at the start and two charge for her friend, and then maybe if she's transformed, she has a bit more attack and Wodawa effect. Yeah, that's that, that's gonna be great. I'm sure it's going to be super helpful. No. No, it's not. The other problem is that, honestly, her stat, especially now, very shaky. Even with, like, if you actually run Dark Breath on her, you're sitting at 46 attack. What the fuck do you want me to do with that? It's not that bad for a character like Legendary Tiki, which also has shaky attack. Because Legendary Tiki can run Special Fighter. Special Fighter Ignis solves any problem when it comes down to damage as long as you have the speed. Which Tiki certainly has. Tiki is an absolutely broken unit as a result. But can Grima do that? Not quite. <sighs> Frankly, if she had like two less HP and two less death and put that into attack, she would be a monster. But as is, she's a bit shaky. Definitely works with Dark Breath and Wind Sweep, though. It's just 
other than that, she's kind of just mediocre. And then here comes Xander, who at least has good fodder as well. Close counter and quick repost. Really good skills. Also odd death wave, but frankly, no. Don't kill a fucking... Don't kill a Xander for that shit. That's just a waste. So, yeah. Colorless is very weak, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, I'd say don't try to summon Colorless at all, if I'm being completely honest. Order should be red, then green, then blue, then colorless. Unless you have a unit in, in that you like specifically, then you should focus on that said unit. But yeah, I believe this concludes my analysis on the banner. I hope you found it informative, and, well, I'll see you tomorrow, and hopefully Red doesn't fuck me over like Hector did. Have a nice one, everybody. See you on Discord.